This is the EDAX Apex Quick Start software video. In just a few minutes, you'll learn how to use the most common EDS functions that will cover most of your EDS data collection needs. In this movie, we'll show how to collect an image as well as the associated options with imaging. We'll also walk through spectral collection, the quality settings, peak ID, basic quant, and the options, as well as map collection settings and general mapping. To get started, we come to the top left and we look at our collect image area. If we click on this triangle, we open up the options associated with collecting an image, such as the resolution in pixel dimensions, as well as the easy settings like auto enhance, which adjusts your contrast and brightness, and auto signal to noise, which gives you a clean image. Once we've set those qualities that we like, we then click on the camera and we will get our image. And you can see as soon as it reaches the end of the collection frame, it updates that auto enhancement contrast and brightness. Next, we look at the different modes that we have available to us. So spectrum, line scan, and mapping. And each mode that we have will have associated quality settings with it. So in spectrum mode, we can click on one of the drop downs for the quality settings, quick, standard, high, and manual. And we can also adjust what those values are for each of those quality settings. So for example, the quick has a 10 second collection time. We could also adjust the quality of the data that we collect. So for example, the high resolution is gonna give you the best spectral resolution, and the speed is gonna give you the highest throughput at the slight expense of a few EV in resolution. Once we have that set, we click on OK. And then we can define a few areas in the software. And so we can click on a spot to get a spot or we can click and drag to get a box. And that box also gives us the dimensions of the area that we've drawn. And finally, we'll draw just a third spot. Once we have all of that defined, we can click on the collect button. And you'll see that the spectral window starts to collect. We can also access our tools as we're collecting to be able to look at the elements present in pie chart or bar graph form just by clicking around. And you can see that it updates each of the elements as it's collecting from the different areas. All of the data is automatically being stored in our project panel that we could access at any time. The really nice thing is the ability to quickly send any of that data out in a shareable format. So for example, we could click on save and then we could save it as an SPC file, which is the common EDAX SPC spectrum file. And we could save that anywhere that we want on our hard drive or even a network drive. We can also send to folder and that sends the spectrum out as an image, and that gives you the ability to share with anybody not using an EDS system or to quickly put into a PowerPoint or an email. One of the options available to us is the ability to automatically get our peak ID, but we can go in and manually do a peak ID as well. So if we want to look at this very small peak here, we click on that small peak, and sure enough, that looks like it fits manganese, and that does fit well. So with just a click of the mouse, we can add a new element, and then save this, and that saves it into the project panel automatically as well. And of course, anytime you do an update to your peak ID, you can show the updated quant results and they are then reflected in the quant result value area as well as the pie chart or bar graph. Some of the other right mouse click options available to you are 
changing your background to show or not show the background and changing the color. Also, you can do the same with your deconvolution. Element ID gives you a few other uh, options. So you can show the element ID or not show it, plus show any of your artifact peaks and also limit to just the most basic labels to clean up your spectrum ID. We also have calibrate functions available from the right mouse click, as well as the ability to change your label size and border around your boxes for your elements. And this home view button on the top left of the spectral window will always take you back to the full view area of your spectrum, or you could even customize the area to uh, hone in on one single area of interest. You can pull up your element ID at any time, and this opens up the periodic table where you can add and remove elements as well. Now we'll move on to mapping. For our spectrum collection, I was working at about 20,000 counts per second. And now I'm going to move over to my microscope and open up my current a bit to get to a higher mapping collection rate. And you can see that even now at 60,000 counts per second, I still have a nice good process time with a low 10% dead time, getting most of our output counts per second out and still have a nice high quality resolution. So now we can immediately start mapping with no further changes required. And we have the option to confirm the elements after the preview. So very quickly, it gives us some elements that it's found and we could update and adjust this list to add and remove elements as we please. And we'll add that trace amount of manganese in there. And we click on OK. The map quality settings, again, give you the quick, standard, and high quality. And you also have resolution settings. So you can have higher pixel resolution. And the quality settings give you the amount of data per pixel. So you have your pixels amount uh, or resolution in X and Y. And then the amount of data per pixel is reflected in your quality. As we're collecting, we have various displays and we can change the display. The field of view is our electron image. The overlay is an overlay of all selected maps. The CPS map is a representation of your counts per second per pixel. And then we have an overlay on the image. As we scroll down, we can see each of the different thumbnails of the various maps. And I'm using my mouse rollerball to scroll down. Any of the maps of interest, I just click on, and it adds them to the overlay here in the left-hand side. And you could toggle those on or off as you choose. You can also change the size of the maps in your thumbnail view to make them larger and smaller again, to customize them exactly as you'd like. And note the scale bar here is an intensity display. After just a few minutes, our maps are filling in nicely, so we can stop this at any time. But first, I just want to show you one more option, and that's how you can adjust your element colors even while you're mapping. So for example, if we wanted to change one of our elements, um, let's say we want to change this titanium, we first click on the color, the element that we want to change, and then we click on the color that we want to change it to, and click on OK, and you can see that updates immediately. This will now conclude the Quick Start Apex software tutorial.